It's funny how Trump is so proud of being a criminal when he used to campaign on being the president of law and order. Former President Donald Trump is set to turn himself in today in Georgia, where he's accused of conspiring to undermine the last election. He's joined by a range of co-defendants who've already surrendered to face allegations including poll worker harassment and trying to break into voting machines. Why is this chick so happy about getting arrested? That's pretty weird. Nicole Killian is just outside of Atlanta's Fulton County Jail, uh, where Trump will be booked. Nicole, good morning. Hey, good morning to you, Anne Marie. Former President Trump will be treated just like any other criminal defendant who comes to this jail, complete with fingerprinting and a potential mugshot. Former President Trump said he will proudly be arrested when he turns himself in. Trump joins at least nine other co-defendants who have surrendered this week, including his former personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani. He does not look happy whatsoever. Who was charged with 13 counts for pushing false election claims in Georgia. Allegations he denies. This indictment is a travesty. I mean, no, you're being prosecuted for committing a bunch of serious crimes. The former New York mayor built his career taking down the mafia with RICO charges. Now he faces his own racketeering charge. Giuliani's bond was set at $150,000, and he was spotted at a bail bond facility shortly after he was booked. Who's putting up his bail? One of Giuliani's attorneys said he only posted a percentage of his bond, and sources have indicated he has struggled with legal costs. I can assure you that regardless of any fee situation, he's going to be receiving the most effective representation possible. Got it? Yeah, I, I, I really hope that he is struggling paying his legal fees and stuff, because that would be awesome. John, we saw Late Wednesday, a federal judge denied requests from two of Trump's other top aides, former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows and ex-Justice Department official Jeffrey Clark. Both were seeking to delay their surrender, but will now have to turn themselves in by Friday or face a warrant for their arrest. I'm glad they were denied because they shouldn't get special treatment just because they were some people part of the federal government. And back here at the jail, we know that there are a number of protesters who have called for a rally this morning ahead of the former president's surrender. We just saw at least one person pass by thus far. Uh, but a local and federal law enforcement remain on high alert and plan to lock this area down later today. Anne-Marie. So, as we mentioned, there are a number of co-defendants uh, when it comes to this case. Some have already surrendered. Do we have any idea, with the clock ticking, whether or not others will surrender today? Well, it's certainly possible. You know, it's not anything that they broadcast in advance, but we know that the majority of the defendants in this case have secured a bond agreement so with the exception of a few. So those that have already uh, been able to negotiate the conditions of their surrender, uh, we expect would uh, turn themselves in in short order. But again, it's kind of up to them with respect to timing. And we know that a federal judge rejected a request by former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows to postpone his surrender. His attorneys were arguing that this case should be moved to a different court. Do you know what the game plan is here? Well, we'll have to see. I mean, you know, it's very clear that Mark Meadows and also former Justice Department official Jeffrey Clark, uh, they have been clear that they believe that this case should be moved out of Fulton County into federal court. And so that's why they filed a number of emergency motions this week, trying to delay their surrender because they wanted uh, that case to be heard first and a decision to be made as to whether or not the case would be moved uh, before they're subject to surrender. But basically, a federal judge struck that down and said that, you know, the statutory language uh, didn't hold up and it didn't warrant uh, in, an injunction in this case. Furthermore, you have the district attorney who uh, made very clear in her response uh, to Meadows, for instance, uh, that she'd been very gracious in allowing these defendants up to two weeks to surrender. And she said she was not going to make any exceptions. She also uh, made a similar remark uh, in response to Jeffrey Clark, uh, you know, pushing back against uh, his argument that it would be hard 
to try to scramble and get a flight here to Atlanta. And she said, you know, basically, that's not a good excuse. So were they arguing, look, it's just too hard to get to Atlanta? Or were they arguing this is a case that really should be in, in a federal courthouse and not in a state courthouse? Well, it, it was a combination. I mean, obviously, their ultimate objective is to get this case moved to federal court. But until those proceedings could be held, they wanted basically a stay on them not having to surrender or be arrested. And so from that standpoint, that's where the federal judge stepped in and said, well, I can't really do that. You're kind of subject to the conditions set by the district attorney, uh, again, who weighed in with her opinion, saying that, you know, she's not going to grant any exceptions to these two. And then there's Rudy Giuliani. He surrendered yesterday, but he had someone with him, a former New York City police commissioner, uh, Bernard Carrick. He's not a defendant. Why was he with Giuliani? Uh, you know, I asked him that, and he declined to comment, uh, but it appears that he may be assisting the uh, former mayor in this process uh, in some shape or form, uh, although we're not exactly clear uh, on that. But uh, that being said, you know, in terms of Giuliani coming down here, for instance, he didn't even have a lawyer here in Georgia. We just learned who that person was uh, yesterday morning. And, of course, that bond agreement was uh, settled where we saw the former mayor uh, subject to a $150,000 bond. His attorney later said that uh, he got a surety bond, which means he only had to put up uh, a percentage of that. But uh, this has really been a pretty humbling experience for the mayor. He did say on uh, his uh, Twitter X or his X show, I should say, I guess it's no longer Twitter, his X show last night uh, that, you know, he did pass by uh, some of the inmates in the jail and he's, you know, said that he uh, really wasn't uh, emotional about this, and obviously he uh, defended his uh, rationale as far as his involvement uh, after the 2020 election, uh, really expressing no regrets in how he handled himself, even though now he's facing some uh, 13 counts from his activities.